energy is it's not a luxury, it's a necessity, especially in a country like Israel where our ethos is built around a startup nation. If you want algorithms to run, if you want computers to run. You need power. You need power. So Iran, we're at the heart of the beast, and this is what sets this station apart from other stations. Yes. You hit the jackpot, and it's transformed the region. My children, your children's children Absolutely. will reap the benefit of this. Absolutely. So this is ground zero, huh? <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> we won't live by our sword, but we will live with our sword. We'll be on the guard all the time. You'll see the flags when you come in, be the Israel flag, the Texas flag, and of course the US of A. You know, people always think about natural gas, coal, but this here is the future. Everything that you're describing is to bring God glory. It's not for money, it's not for power, it's not for personal gain, it's to show the world that God is faithful to his word. And I'm looking at that, I'm saying that is a hugely powerful testament. They said the land would not lack anything. Oil is anything, <laughs> so it wouldn't lack it. When we think about the miracle of the return of the Jewish people to the land, if there's one thing that we all understand is that the people of Israel arrived to a place where there was nothing. It was a desolate country. And today, 70 years later, we see a country that leads in many technologies, but especially in energy. The Bible tells us to be a light to the nation by presenting the Messiah of Israel to the nation, but also to be a light in technology. And today, Israel is a source of energy to Egypt, to Jordan, to the country around us. So let us watch together the miracle of energy in the land of Israel. Pretty much everything we do in everyday life depends on one thing, available energy. And for us in Israel, the concept or the idea of being dependent on our neighbors for our available energy is something quite unsettling. We have to be able to stand alone on our own resources in this country. As a Christian Zionist and a New Covenant believer, Isaiah 65, 1, the calling to render assistance to the Jewish people in a nation of Israel and to help the people of Israel maintain their political and economic independence. Coal, fuel oil, all came over to Israel via containers. None of its neighbors would supply energy. It's expensive, it's highly polluting. Israel truly needs, any industrial nation needs, to not be dependent on other countries. That's why we're here. Geologists at the time said that it's conceivable that there is gas down there. God called me and sent me there. I didn't know how or why. I just knew that I'm supposed to help them find the oil. Until you drill, you don't really know it. All I know is I'm just going to do what he says to do. He tells me to do something, I'm doing it. You know, when you think about it, you really can't run a modern day economy without available fuel and gas. I mean, for this car specifically, but also for Israel at large. Because we're an island economy, we have a large defense force, we need to have ongoing and available fuel and gas in this country. During the Arab Spring in 2011, the natural gas pipeline from Egypt to Israel was blown up not one, not two, but four separate times, leaving Israel desperate for a reliable source of energy. In the 1970s, regional instability caused the cost of oil to spike more dramatically than ever before in history. This impacted the global economy and especially the United States. Energy independence is hugely important for any country, but in Israel, it's a necessity. We're here because Delik and other companies have discovered a huge, huge amount of gas, mm -hmm. of natural gas, uh, just out that way. If it's been there for so long and no one knew it was there, yeah. there's clearly some kind of like magic or genius that went into the process. I don't know if uh, genius, but like a mix of uh, science and guts and some uh, belief. 
turn of the century, and Nobel made two modest-sized discoveries. The first discovery, it was about one billion cubic meters, enough to supply about a year or so of uh, gas demand here in Israel. Shortly after, the Mary B field was discovered, and that's a much more significant field. That basically started natural gas here in Israel. But in 2009, we made a much more significant discovery, which was Tamar, and that's close to 13 TCF. Okay. So that for decades for to decades. come. So a lot, a lot of gas. A lot of gas. And then a year after, we discovered Leviathan, and that's twice as large. So six, seven decades in current consumption rates. This was a $3 billion project. But when they talk about future projections of what it's going to do to our economy, it's, it's enormous. Even five years ago, no one in their right mind would have thought that Israel is going to export petroleum to neighbors. We're now uh, actively exporting to Egypt and to Jordan from Leviathan. That's really significant, uh, not only from an energy perspective, but like geopolitical perspective, that's huge. The discovery of natural gas turned the tides for Israel, making us not only energy independent, but a global powerhouse in the energy sector. Still, natural gas alone is not enough. The world today very much depends on oil, which has yet to be discovered in Israel. But with a little faith, all things are possible. We're on our way to meet uh, Jeffrey, who's the Israeli CEO for Zion Oil and Gas. This is an American-based company, and we're gonna meet him in the Beit She'an Valley. This is sort of through the Jordan Valley in the northern part of Israel. This is a very promising site for finding or oil or gas uh, right inside of Israel. Hey! So this is it, huh? Mati, good how to see you, man? Good, good. Woo. This so, is the place, huh? This is it. This is it, here we are. This is our drilling pad. This is Over where it all happened. Where it happened and it will happen. We're standing here inside the Jordan Valley, or right next to the Jordan Valley. Right. We're standing on a dirt pad. It seems like there's been a lot of work done here. This is a drilling pad. For early drilling operations, you have to have a pad, as you see right here, OK? A few years ago, oh, yeah. there wasn't a centimeter here pretty well that wasn't covered with equipment. We took upon ourselves to conduct uh, 3D survey, 72 kilometers, first time. And what does that show? First time in Israel. What does it show? What's six kilometers under where you're standing right now, right? And that's why we're here right now, because we are on the verge of drilling our new well, right here. Okay. Our founder, John Brown, right? None of us would be here right now if it wasn't for him, okay, had the vision, and uh, we've been drilling actively since uh, 2005. That's 15 years. John, thank you again for taking the time. Maybe as a first question, you can start with just sharing the backstory of why you founded Zion Oil and Gas. Well, see, years ago, God told me to write the vision. It's in Habakkuk 2, 2, and 3. It's clear. It said, write the vision. It will come to pass. So you have to be persistent. And I didn't know at that point it was a 39-year journey. <laughs> I thought it was a six-month deal. We're going to go over there and get the oil. And I didn't know there was a, a journey, a faith journey, that I was going to have to face. Well, that was I was a new believer, and I thought I was so enthusiastic because, I mean, I had God talk to me, man, you know, and that changed my whole life. So, you know, I left my job down there, you know, and took off to Israel. And it's when I went there is when God gave me that vision at the hotel in Tel Aviv. It's all there. It's blessing of Jacob. It's all you got to do is read it. It's the blessings on the head of Joseph. We're on the head of Joseph of Manasseh. Exactly where he told us the oil was is there. Jeffrey, do you believe we're going to find oil here? I mean, I'm, I'm looking around. There's the borders on our east, on our north, our enemies. We just saw what happened in Beirut. We know what's going further north with ISIS and what happened in Syria. These are our neighbors. You don't choose your neighbors. We are a country that have to have our own resources. The, the world is going on to renewable and everything and such. That's not going to happen tomorrow. Israel truly needs, any industrial nation needs, 
to have and not be dependent on other countries. We did have a huge fund in the Mediterranean mm -hmm. offshore, right? But there are security problems with that. If and when we have a discovery here, this will be onshore, right? And it'll be much better protected. So that's why we're here. So this would be a tool in that direction? Absolutely. We've been blessed with an enormous supply of natural gas, and the discovery of oil looks like it could be just around the corner. As we look to the future, we are turning to another, nearly unlimited source of energy that has existed since the creation of the universe. So, Aran, you get to call this place uh, home every single day, huh? Yeah, it is. It is. It's our second home. Yeah, this is the place. So this is it. This is the power plant. Yeah, this is a Shalim, Plot A. Interesting. As you can see, this is like um, a valley of uh, renewable energy in Israel. Looking into the future, this is one sample of where the country is going. It's a very huge area. We are able to absorb the sun radiation, free energy radiation. And this is sort of like the solar valley of Israel. I mean, you have the three main technologies for harvesting energy from the sun. Can you sort of break down how each one works? We can see we have the PV, we have the trough, and we also have here a storage which contains the heat in the night when, we, when the sunlight goes down. Fascinating. So, as I mentioned, this is the drive pylon. This is the, mm. let's say, the, the machine. This is the engine that moves it. Yeah. The trough track, the sun knows where the sun should be every minute, and it goes from the morning to the sunset. This is one arm. There's another engine for the other arm. Exactly. And we just heard it sort of pivot and rotate. Here, did it again. He knows that he needs to rotate because he's doing a correction every few seconds just to see that he's in the middle of the sun. It's amazing that this is a Jerusalem-based technology here from Israel that's now being used across the world. Yeah, you're right. So this is called the TESS. TESS is Thermal Energy Storage. This is what 20. sets this station apart from other stations. Yes. You have this like buffer of, of stored energy that keeps going and keeps going, even when the sun is down. Exactly. So all in all, this part, mm -hmm. the traditional part, this is just a regular power plant. Correct. This part is where the magic is. This is the magic. Because you're just inputting heat into a system. Correct. That's the same as any power plant. The difference is, one, you're getting it from the sun. It doesn't cost any money. Mm -hmm. And two, you have a reserve that's charging when you have a, a surplus of energy, so you can keep running when that energy source is gone. Correct. And all of that without having to input any additional energy. You know, the sun, it's just endless available energy. And the way you guys have harnessed it and connected it to all the different technologies is truly remarkable, but it also shows how much future there is for this technology. Israel's founding fathers knew that energy independence is necessary for the continuation and survival of Israel and the Jewish people. Decades later, our efforts continue with no signs of slowing down. The whole idea was there was no oil in Israel. And the first thing I saw in Deuteronomy was the land would not lack anything. Oil isn't anything, <laughs> so it wouldn't lack it. As believers, we put our hope in God, knowing that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the assurance of things unseen. We're expecting that we have here a lot of new projects in Israel. We're energy independent, and second, we're exporting, and that's a big boon for Israel. When God put me in Zion Oil and Gas and had me created, people would ask me about this oil, and I'd tell them, you know? And it seemed like there was always a blank look on her face. I would have made in 1981, when I got saved, $200,000 a year. You know how I wound up in 12 years? Working in a Baptist church cleaning toilets for $5 an hour. Remember the brook that God sent Elijah to? He sent the ravens to feed him? He said, I'm gonna send you to the brook. In other words, you go sit and wait, John. And when it comes time, then you're, then you're gonna move when it's my time. This entire place is gonna be filled with all the drilling equipment, and then we're gonna drill, and we are encouraged that we're going to have a discovery. It obviously, it's gonna be a huge impact on Israel. It's a privilege to be living in this country today and to be able to specifically drill for oil and gas in Israel. <laughs> Loss of words. Every promise that he made, he's gonna keep. Now, because we get tired of waiting, don't mean anything. <laughs> 
with us today, we have somebody very, very special, Dr. Colonel Eran Lerman. He was the Deputy Director of National Security Council for the Prime Minister. Shalom and welcome to our studio. Shalom, sir. Let me first of all remind uh, our, viewers. our viewers that uh, our late Prime Minister, great Golda, Golda May, used to pull uh, uh, the, the tail of the great prophet Moses. She yeah. used to say, great, great leader, prophet, lousy navigator. 40 years <laughs> in the desert, we end up in the only part of the region which has no oil. Well, turns out Moses knew more than she did That's because funny. we do have quite a lot of energy, but it's offshore. You open the sea, you go down, there's plenty of that. And to really be effective in exporting, we need to team up with Egypt and Cyprus and countries on the uh, uh, other side of the Mediterranean in Europe who would be the gate to the European market. January 2019, there was a meeting in Cairo of the energy ministers of seven countries that came together, seven entities, Italy, Greece, Cyprus, Egypt, Israel and Jordan and the Palestinians. In the middle of all the conflicts, and here were seven countries. And since then, we have been joined by France, which is very strongly standing with us. We have a, a community, an, a, not an alliance, but an alignment of countries that want to make good use of these energy resources. And if we build one pipeline common to Egypt, Cyprus and Israel, we can take our product to Europe. The problem is, we are running into a conflict with Turkey. And Turkey is led by a party which is Islamist in nature. It wants to reverse the secularization of Turkish society. We have to remember uh, when American uh, pilgrims sailed to uh, Massachusetts, uh, the Ottoman Empire was the most powerful nation on earth. And now Erdogan is trying to build this glory again. He is pushing an Islamist agenda. He hates the government in Egypt because they kicked out the Muslim Brotherhood. He hates Israel because of Jerusalem. He hates the Greeks because of all Turkish grievances. And he's trying to push the borders of Turkey so as to block mm -hmm. Israel, Egypt, and Cyprus. You see, because of our finding of gas, we took a different place in the table. Well, we are certainly by now a, a country that is no longer dependent on uh, foreign energy. We can become a significant exporter, combined with the transformation of Israel within the last generation from an economic basket case into one of the world leading centers of innovation, high tech, a AI. That's fulfillment of prophecy that God brought the people of Israel and God is blessing the people of Israel, that Israel will be a light to the nation. When That's... I read this famous line, there will be men, old men and women and children playing in the, the streets, streets of, of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Well, it is city, it's a city it's of definitely... nearly a million people. Yeah. Uh, it, the prophecy is alive. The miracle of the return of the Jewish people. Thank you very much. You're welcome. When we talk about the future of Israel's energy grid, that story cannot be told without speaking with Yosef Abramovich. He's this country's founding father of solar energy. We had moved from Boston to small kibbutz in the Arava Desert, the third most extreme desert in the world. When we got out of the van, it was the end of the day, and the van's air conditioned. We opened the doors, and it was like, oh my god, hit. We are just hit. And I say, oh, I'm sure the whole place works on solar. And of course it didn't, and when I understood that nobody was going to do it, I said, this I'm going to do. And I thought it was going to be easy. <laughs> so there wasn't. Yeah. We need to come up with a business model called the Arava Company. But it was the first, and the first is always the hardest in every market. Plus, I was just hit with this crazy vision. Wow. Wouldn't it be cool if we got the whole Mm -hmm. area, the south of the country, from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea, to go 100% daytime solar by 2020. Like, I was just, like, on fire about that. And everyone, again, was just like... Yeah, it's not gonna happen. It's, 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 it's technically not feasible, financially it's not feasible. So 
So you build this first field, yeah. and you're somehow victorious. <laughs> what was the battle to get this approved? What was the battle to get through the, the red tape on this, on this project? So the state would essentially, the first megawatts would have to essentially be subsidized to be able to jumpstart an entire industry. So you can understand some objection. There's no technical expertise in the country. The gas companies, everybody tried and no one could break through. And I think because we were coming from a place of values, because we wanted to do something majestic and good for the environment as well, we, they reluctantly gave us like uh, a pass when they opened the doors just a little bit. Did you see a substantial shift in the way people look, the, the notion of clean or green energy? after this happened or during the process? Was there something clicking in the, we in the heads of people? We saw really clearly 14 years later. <laughs> in other words, today. Today, we're celebrating a whole year that this is the first region in the world to be 100% solar powered during the day. Amazing. Yosef and his team had to do everything from raising capital to lobbying for changes to Israeli energy laws. In the process, the minds and hearts of Israeli leaders were opened, and they welcomed solar energy to this country. But Yosef didn't stop there. So there's 600 million people in Africa without access to power, and the population of the continent is gonna double in one generation. The most important value to me is that we're all created in God's image. And that, therefore, we're all endowed with the right to dignity. The dignity of real education, can't have it without power. Dignity of healthcare, the dignity of a job and a growing economy that, that, that needs to be able to create these jobs. None of it is possible without electricity. In the Bible, in the Garden of Eden, God creates beautiful universe and gifts it to humanity to work it and to also guard it. So what's stronger than partnering with an orphan youth village and having that income cover uh, all the health care costs plus, you know, for 500 orphans. So it's all, it's all connected. This is the, like, uh, um, I'm actually, um, at a loss for words. Yosef is someone who practices what he preaches. His own nuclear family reflects his desire to impact those in need. Together with his wife, Susan, Yosef raised five children, two of whom were adopted from Ethiopia and given a renewed chance to thrive in the promised land. Because when someone's life mission is based on biblical values, their business ventures and their private life are often indistinguishable. Thank you for joining us as we provide a spiritual insight of what God is doing in Israel and in the Middle East. If you want to learn more about what God is doing in Israel, make sure to visit us on our webpage and follow us on social media. Shalom and God bless you for Jerusalem.